How's it going everyone? Universal Mastery. Welcome back to my channel. What I do here is I break down the occult sciences and I break them down to a practical level so that you can use them and you can apply them in your day-to-day -day life and get real results with the things that I'm teaching here on my channel. Um, the first thing that I'd like to do is let you know who I am just so that you know who you're getting your, uh, this information from. My name is Jeremiah Schwartz. I am a professional occultist. I am fully initiated in the Kabbalistic tree, being the front side, the back side. I'm studied when it comes to the 22 archetypal pathways in regards to the major arcana of the tarot. And I'm also studied when it comes to planetary energies in connection to astrology. Okay? So without further ado, we are going to be jumping into the topic of what exactly is God? Okay? We're going to be talking about what is God? And is God good or bad? Okay, so specifically what I'm going to be covering um, is this idea of God. So we hear the word God all the time. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure almost everyone that is watching this video has heard something about God. You've heard something, okay? You've heard somebody say, God did this for me, God did that. God is this, whatever the case may be, the goal of this video is for me to create clarity around God so that you can understand what God is from two different, majorly, or excuse me, mainly from two different perspectives so that when you hear other people talk about God, you're going to have much more clarity on what God actually is in its purest form and also what God can be referred to in its um, more controlling form, okay? So if you're curious and you want to know a little bit more about God and what God truly is and the good and the bad side of God, then stay tuned for this video. Okay, so let me jump right in. So, once again, we've all heard God. Okay, we've all heard this word. Okay, God is coming from one of the main religions that has huge amounts of influence in the entire world around us, which is the religion of Christianity. But that's not the only... Uh, place where this word God comes from. It, it comes from other religions as well. Um, so when we hear God, it makes us think of something that is a higher power, something that may be close to an overarching force that controls the world. And I'm going to break it down like this. God, in its truest form, is not a spirit. It's not an entity. It's not a deity. Um, it's not a person. It's everything. Okay? It is the source. That's what I like to refer to when I hear God. Okay? God truly is the source of everything. It is not a single thing. It is not a spirit that you can pray to and that you can worship. It is everything. It is the ultimate architect of evolution itself. It has injected itself into everything to be able to interact with itself. It is literally everything. So when you hear God, you're really talking about in its truest form, when you hear God in its truest form, what God really is, is the source. Now, not everyone that says God is always referring to the source, though. And I'll explain in a second. But that's truly what God is in its purest, deepest, 
and most authentic form. It is everything. It is literally source, the source of everything. And what does the source mean? That is the source of evolution. It is how nature, the universe, the galaxy, the multiverse, the megaverse, the planets, ones we know about, ones we don't know about, it's how everything naturally functions to create further evolution. That is what source represents. And that's truly what God means. It is the source. So you can't pray to the source. You can't pray to God directly because it's not a person. It's not a spirit. It's not an entity. It's in everything. So God, the source, is an aspect of you and it's an aspect of me. Okay, I have this evolutionary one connection and power that is within me and you have it within you. You are a God in your own right. You are the source or an aspect of the source in your own right. How do I know this? Because you can evolve. The source exists within you. You're a part of everything. Okay, so you have the power to be in alignment with that source aspect within yourself, which means you can evolve in the most effective way that you can, as long as you're making the decisions and you're going down the pathways that fuel your own evolution, which would be being in alignment with the source within yourself, because you are technically the source. Now, a lot of people's awareness has been distracted away from this source aspect of their being. So they're not making decisions that are helping them evolve, which is causing the human being to further degradate so that they don't have the powers of the source of evolution itself. And there are, I mean, think about it. If God, the source, runs through everything, then everything or anything is truly possible. But there is an evolutionary process that you have to travel through and experience to develop that level of, a, uh, that level of power. Okay? Um, so that is what God is. It is the source, and we all have the source within us. Every human being. Some are more connected to that source aspect within themselves than others because they're intending to gain more power or intending to evolve properly. So that's, you know, that's a part of the world we live in. Some are more aware of that than others. And when you're more in alignment with the source aspect of yourself, you get benefits from evolution itself. Things will work out for you better. And what do I mean by that? They will work out in your evolutionary interest, no matter what happens to you. As long as your intent is focused on your own self-development, your own increasing your power in its true form, not ego power, not egotistical power, but power of evolution, transformation, establishing uh, your kingdom to experience life in its truest form. This is all power. And it's the source, God, is directly connected to power, okay? Real power. Once again, not egotistical power, not meaning you're some manager of a company, not meaning you're controlling people uh, to have them do things that are just based on what your desires are, your immediate desires. That's not necessarily true power. True power is deep. True power is silence of the mind. True power is the ability to control your reality through silence through your unconscious and your subconscious, okay? Not just conscious nagging, okay? So once again, 
as I'm saying, um, there is a level of building this source connection that you already have installed within your being. So you start off as an aspect of source and the more you work on developing this connection, you can literally become an embodiment of the source itself in a human body, which basically means every decision you make, every thought you have is based on your own evolution. And naturally that's going to affect the world around you and cause the world to evolve. Okay, and one human being can achieve this process and another human being can achieve this process and another human, all kinds of human beings can achieve this process of becoming the source, waking up as this source being, waking up as God, the source of evolution. Multiple people can do this, all kinds of people can do this, but the reality is the process to doing that is very intense and it's very challenging and you have to embrace all aspects of reality and yourself to step into that. So it's very challenging and that's why there's not many people that have done this and that are going to do this, especially in today's time where we are in the phase of evolution of the Kali Yuga, okay, where people are very far away from the source, but we are in that phase where we're getting closer, okay? Um, so that is a fact. Now, this is the, once again, this was the truest aspect of source. Okay. Now, let's talk about the artificial side of source. Okay. So there are a lot of people that refer to God and they think God is an entity. They think God is an actual spirit that they can pray to, that they can talk to. Rather than talking to the evolutionary potential within themselves, they think it, it is literally like a external being that will grant them favors if they pray to it. And that this external being is the ruler of every other being on the entire planet, galaxy, multiverse, megaverse, and that is false. There is not one entity that rules everything. Everything is an aspect of source, and the more you develop that source within yourself, the more influence you have and the more you become a vessel to project that source influence outside of yourself and in your own personal reality. But at the end of the day, once again, source is everything. It is more powerful in some people than others, but it is in everything. Okay? So to think that God is an actual entity, even if it was a person that stepped into the source themselves, that's still one source being, which means there could be another person that has developed that source aspect within themselves and they have a different evolutionary role than the other person that had stepped into it. And this process can repeat itself. So even praying or worshiping another human being that has developed this evolutionary power yeah, that person may have a lot of power. They may have a lot of influence, but they're not the they they are not the source of creation. They've just developed that connection within themselves. So they are a very important evolutionary character and they are a very important evolutionary person and you can gain tons of value from those people like myself. You can gain tons of value. I mean, life transforming, evolutionary value, information, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. But that doesn't mean that that person is the ruler of the entire planet necessarily. 
They may have rulership over a large aspect of many things, but another human being can do the same thing. And the entire goal is just evolution from a source perspective. So to just think that one person is the only person that can do that process and will be the only person because they're the God of everything is false. Once again, someone that's developed the source within themselves and has stepped into that or woken up into that, that's a very powerful person, a very influential person. I'm talking on the degree where you can change many timelines, many events on our planet today. I can do this. But that doesn't mean that that person is the only one that has that potential. There are other people that can do that and can get to the same level of power. So to worship one person like they're the only, and they're going to be the only, and they're forever the only, is false. And that's the other side, the false aspect of God, where we're brought into this idea that we think it's a single being, and that you can pray to it as an entity, rather than realizing that the source, God, of everything is in yourself because you carry that aspect of evolution within yourself. So if I wanted to fool you and distract you from realizing your true potential, and if I wanted to stay in power and rule you and your mind and your psyche and control you, I would make you think there is a spirit or an entity that is the ultimate God. And I would have you pray to that entity, to that spirit, to that deity, as if it's the source of all creation when I know, me, when I know it's not. And when I know that I'm focused on my evolution so that I'm continuing to develop that source power within myself, that evolutionary power, while you're distracted praying to a spirit, to an entity, to an archetypal force that is just one aspect of evolution. Now, if I really wanted to make sure you didn't develop power, uh, source power, then I would make sure that the spirit that I tell you to worship is a spirit that wants to destroy you. And this is where we come into the idea within the Christian religion of Yahweh. Okay, so it's known that Yahweh is one of the aspects of God. Some Christians will even call Yahweh God. And this is just an example within the Christian religion. There are other examples within other religions that have this idea of God. Okay? But when you do research on Yahweh, once again, you will find that it's connected directly to God within the Christian religion, which is linking the awareness of the person within the religion to Yahweh, the spirit, the entity, and thinking that is God, an ultimate being that is taking direct place in the creation of everything, a supreme being. When in reality, Yahweh is just another spirit, another entity that is specifically a very brutal, aggressive war god. Do your research. If you don't want to believe me, you don't need to. Do your own research. Yahweh is a war god that wants to kill and has been known to uh, destroy many times over. So within this Christian religion, we have all these people that are told that Yahweh is God. You have the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You have Jesus, the Holy Spirit, which is Yah the Boeth, and then Yahweh, the Father. And you're told that all these three entities or all these three forces are one, when in reality they're all separate. Jesus Christ is completely separate from Yahweh. Yahweh is completely separate than Yaldaboeth. 
the Holy Spirit is Yaldabaoth. It's like this overarching uh, chaos entity that wants to be worshipped as the source. So you could think of Yaldabaoth. This is within Gnosticism. Not The Gnostics understood this force as Yaldabaoth. It can also go by other names, but I like to use Yaldabaoth because it's a already understood name and it's very real. Um, you could think of Yaldabaoth as being the overarching force over the Yahweh and the Jesus Christ that likes to take your awareness into either Jesus Christ or Yahweh, and then the Yaldabaoth takes it from the Yahweh and the Jesus Christ and it uplines to Yahweh. So when you see these religious people that are talking about God, they're saying, God did this for me. I prayed to God and he did this. First of all, they're saying he, he did this for me. Whenever you hear someone say that, that is subconscious symbolism, that their, their awareness is locked into the false idea of God because God's not a he, God's not a she, it's everything. It is androgynous. The source is androgynous. So when they say he did that for me, he did this, that's false. It's all false. They're thinking, they're talking about something that is a supreme being that rules everything, but really they're either talking about uh, in this context of cr the Christian religion, they're either talking about Jesus Christ, which was the good shepherd who was sacrificed on the cross for trying to save the world around him, or they're talking about Yahweh, who was a war god, who is the father of Jesus Christ, a war god who killed, raped, murdered, okay? Or the Yaldabaoth, who will do anything to deceive the mind of the human race to get the human race to worship him as a god, the Yaldabaoth which is exactly what Yaldabaoth is doing with the entire Christian religion. It's, it's, the Christian religion is a pure manifestation of this actually happening. Um, so when that's why a lot of the times you will see Christians that are either locked into the Jesus archetype where they're very good, you know, they're very good people. They have great intentions. They're very nice, polite. They want to help you. But simultaneously, they're losing everything good in their life in that process. That's Jesus. All his 12 disciples turned on him, and then he got sacrificed. So then the person that is locked into the Jesus Christ archetype loses all of their good, and that energy goes somewhere. It goes to the uplines of the Kabbalistic tree, which is somebody like myself, somebody who's into black magic, somebody who's, who's traveled through the entire Kabbalistic tree, okay, who has control over the spirits that, he, that like to take that energy. Or you're a Christian that is chaotic. You're one of the Christians that likes to um, yell at people, tell them that they're going to hell. Uh, you're one of those aggressive Christians where you're telling people they're going to burn in hell. <laughs> you know, telling people that they, they need to repent for their sins. They need to turn to Christ or else, or else God is going to strike them down. Or else when the apocalypse happens, they're going to burn, right? And that would be a Christian that's locked into the Yahweh, which was a war god. So this is a person that is thinking the source of all creation is an actual spirit, which is Yahweh. When in reality, Yahweh is just another spirit, a very powerful spirit, but it is another spirit that wants to destroy, kill, and uh, take over. And that's why you will see Christians that will act in that way, defending the Christian religion because they're being possessed by Yahweh. Okay? It's right there. Um, and there's that. And uh, this would be the false perspective of God. And once again, I'm giving this example from the Christian religion. There are other religions. There are other traditions that use the word of God and if they're referring to God as a specific entity, if they're calling God a him or a her, if they're using it as this 
supreme being that rules over everything, then that's false. That is not God. God truly, in its realest form, is the source of everything. It is androgynous, it is male, it is female, it is adult, it is child, it is in between, it's up, it's down, it's hot, it's cold, it's left, it's right. It's the entire spectrum of everything. That is truly what God is, and the source is evolution. That's literally what it means. It is evolution, the process of evolution, the way things need to go to create more creation, when things need to be destroyed and broken down to create new. And this process cycles. And that is truly what God is. So when you hear people talk about God and you can see they're referring to evolution, the process of going down and up, light and dark that is truly God okay and when people are talking about God they're talking about the evolution that source aspect within themselves because we all have that we all have the power to evolve okay so that's what I'm gonna say for this video okay if you enjoyed this video definitely hit the thumbs up okay definitely also make sure you go and you hit that subscribe button that is down below and right next to it, make sure you hit the notification bell because I post videos as often as I can. And if you enjoyed this content and you feel like it was valuable and you may know somebody that could gain value from this as well, definitely go ahead and share it to somebody. Okay, Send it to one of your friends or one of your family that's interested in this type of content and just send it to them. Or feel free to post this link, this YouTube video, or any of my other ones on your social medias. Okay, Let's get this information to spread. All right. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave that there. Um, if any of you that are watching would like to gain access to exclusive content that is not on my YouTube channel, then what I would highly recommend is joining my Patreon. Okay. So on my Patreon, uh, first, actually, let me say this, where you can find my Patreon is in the YouTube drop down section. It is literally going to be the first link at the top of my description. It says my Patreon right next to it. You can't miss it. Um, that's where you'll find it. So on my Patreon, I have four tiers, okay? Um, in the first tier, it's literally just going to be support, which is only a dollar a month, okay? You don't get access to anything exclusive, just support, okay? Uh, the second tier is where you step into an exclusive vault of content. Um, so that content ranges from teaching you how to do an invocation, which is fundamental in the occult field. Um, and then it also teaches you about Kabbalah. So I break down the 10 spheres of the Kabbalistic tree, uh, the Sephiroth, and then I break down the Klippothic spheres, which is the tree of death, uh, the Klippoth. Um, so I break down tons of information on that, which can give you a lot more clarity on what the occult is based around, okay, in its like truest form, which is very important to know in regards to initiation. Um, so that's all accessible at tier two, okay, and other videos as well. Then when you get into tier three, you are gaining access to my magic training course, which is a literal step-by-step -step process that I take you through on pretty much everything you need to be able to perform successful magic. So I teach you your tools that you need. I teach you how to activate your tools. I teach you how to use them and set them up. And I demonstrate all of this on camera. And we are also going into angel magic. We're doing necromancy uh, and we're doing demon magic. And then we're gonna be finishing uh, with casting a low magic spell to control your immediate reality so that you can see how you've been developing power throughout that process and how to put it to use. Okay, this is all accessible at tier three. Okay, then we have tier four, which is my top tier service. This is called the Vampire Service, which is a service that I literally perform for you on the 29th of every month, except for the one month that does not have a 29th. Um, and within the service, I'm doing high level call magic to completely change your energetic structure that will make you more receptive so that you can pull energy in from the chaos around you, turning it into your own power and potential. Okay, So rather than pushing out energy and feeding chaos, you're able to suck it in and increase your power, which uh, makes you a more powerful occultist, makes you a more powerful magician, 
makes you a more powerful person in general, okay? Um, and once again, that is gonna be accessible at tier four. So that is literally going to be one of my most popular tiers that is on my YouTube channel, and rightfully so. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna leave it at that. So with that being said, I would love to give a special shout out to all of my top tier Patreon members. I literally have all of their names that are mentioned right below that Patreon link within the parentheses. So huge shout out to all of you, ladies and gentlemen, specifically for taking your occult uh, practices to that next level and taking it more seriously. Because obviously if you're getting that tier, it is a complete and permanent transformation to your energy field uh, that is going to be very valuable for you in your own personal evolution, which is also going to affect the world. Okay, um, so huge shout out. The second shout out that I would like to give is to all of my Patreon members in general. I highly appreciate all of you for taking your knowledge and your practices to that next level. Um, and that's always going to be a wonderful thing. So huge shout out to all of you that are you know studying the occult field, uh, especially learning from me and learning from my Patreon because the things that I talk about in regards to the occult field, they're very, um, they're very deep. Uh, they challenge your your mindset. Um, it it goes it definitely goes against the grain of mainstream occultism, but it is very real. It is very true, um, and you have to be a certain type of person to really understand some of the things that I'm talking about. So I appreciate all of you for really trying to wrap your mind around uh, you know the certain things that I'm talking about in regards to the occult field and what things you want to stay away from and what things you want to dive into. Um, and that's also going to be very valuable uh, for the occult in general uh, as we move into the, the future. Okay, so huge shout out to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the third shout out I would like to give is to all my YouTube subscribers in general. I appreciate all of you for really absorbing this information. So huge shout out. Okay, now the next thing that I would like to take your awareness to is going to be the second link that is in the YouTube description. There you are able to book your own personalized tarot card reading with me where I can literally pinpoint and locate where you are on the Kabbalistic tree itself. So I can see where you are on your own initiatory journey. And a lot of people will have this question like, do I need to initiate into the, uh, you know, the Kabbalistic tree to you know, start making progress through the spheres? The reality is, is when it comes to the Sephiroth, you do not need to even know about the tree to be located on the tree. It literally all starts and initiates itself from your intention. So I've done over a hundred readings so far and every single person is pinpointed somewhere on that tree. Uh, and there's people that don't even know about the tree and they're, they're making progress on it. It just takes discipline, uh, uh, order, you know, intending your own evolution to be traveling up the tree. So I can literally tell you where you are and then I can tell you what you're experiencing, what you're going to be experiencing uh, in your near future and long-term future. And then at the end of the reading, I give you extra homework so you can study deeper into it to know where exactly you're at and to understand it uh, to a better degree. Okay, so if you would like to book that reading with me, definitely check out the second link below. Uh, and I send the reading through WhatsApp. It's all done on WhatsApp. It's not a live reading so that you can always have the reading. It will literally be a permanent reading that you can continue to study, okay? Um, so yeah, definitely check that out at the second link if you're interested. Okay, now the third uh, link that I would like to take your awareness to is where you can become a YouTube member. So this is gonna be the third link within my YouTube description. You can become a YouTube member, so that means when I do my live streams, your name is going to appear in green. And not only is it going to appear in green, but you are going to have a badge right next to your name, which is the color of this moon right here. Okay, it's the same symbol. Um, and then that will change over time uh, into my sigil uh, for my YouTube channel. And um, you will gain access to exclusive emojis. So these emojis are set up in a specific way so that you can use them for psychic warfare. Okay, you can literally use them in... I mean, once you learn how to do it, it takes five seconds. You literally just type your target's name, you place the emojis in certain positions, and it literally causes real psychic effects on your target as long as you're using it on a target that is truly trying to come against your evolution, okay? 
and it is effective and it is very powerful. And once again, you will gain those emojis by becoming a YouTube member. And I have an entire community post for the YouTube members where you can uh, put your enemies into and use the Psychic Warfare program. I even have a YouTube video that explains it, so make sure you go and you watch my YouTube video that is in parentheses called YouTube Members followed by Psychic Warfare Program. That video will give you more information on how this um, technology works, okay? With that being said, I appreciate all of you, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day or night wherever you are, and I will see you on the next video. So, later.